that historically have lived in cool, clear streams and rivers from New York south to Georgia and west to Missouri. Like other amphibians, hellbenders who breathe entirely through their skin are particularly sensitive to water pollution and are good indicators of the clean water that we need for drinking, fishing, and other recreational purposes. Over the past 30 years, scientists have noticed that hellbender populations are declining or disappearing. Recent estimates are that populations have declined by 80% in Ohio and 40% in West Virginia. Several issues including disease, pollution, and even bounty hunts that occurred in the early 1900s have been considered causes of the hellbender's decline. The greatest cause of decline in our region is likely due to erosion that has led to sedimentation of the streams and rivers where the hellbenders live. The resulting silt that enters the stream fills the spaces between gravel and cobble where larval and juvenile hellbenders, as well as the crayfish that they eat, use as shelter. And in extreme cases, the sediment even covers the large boulders inhabited by the adult hellbenders. Scientists from the wilds have been working to study where hellbenders currently live in our region and to determine approximately how many hellbenders are at study sites in Ohio and West Virginia. We also look at what factors are associated with the sites where we find hellbenders. And we have found that the presence of forest around streams and rivers is a critical factor in preventing erosion and increased summer stream temperatures that could impact this species. When we find hellbenders, we measure and weigh them to look at growth rates and to collect blood and swab samples to use for genetics and disease studies. We also have begun using a new survey technique known as environmental DNA or eDNA surveillance to look for hellbender DNA in streams and rivers as a way to know if hellbenders are in the stream or river. Thanks to the Columbus Zoo Fund for Animals, the Hellbender Conservation Center has been created to be used as a facility to raise hellbenders that have been collected as eggs from the wild for future reintroductions and translocations to sites in Maryland, Ohio, and West Virginia. Only around 10% of larval hellbenders survive their first year in the wild. Oh. So we are raising these individuals to approximately four to five years old before reintroducing some of them to the sites that they were collected from and some to sites where hellbenders once lived that have not been found recently. Once we put the hellbenders back into streams, we track them with radio telemetry equipment to see how far and often they move and where they decide to live at those sites. Since many boulders have been covered in some of these streams, we have also worked with the Ohio Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation to create stone boxes that are placed in streams and rivers for hellbender habitat. All of this work to save the hellbender would not be possible without the funding agencies and collaborators that assist us. We've told you about what we do to conserve hellbenders, but here are some things that you can do at home to help hellbenders too. Picking up litter or participating in stream cleanups are excellent ways to prevent pollution of the hellbender's habitat. If you live near streams or rivers, planting trees helps prevent erosion of soil into the streams it helps provide shade to keep water cooler during the summer. Other ways that you can help include supporting conservation by buying a state wildlife stamp, or by supporting your local zoos by buying Ohio Zoo's license plates, by visiting or becoming a volunteer at your local zoo, or by donating to Hellbender Conservation here at the wilds. We have a passion for protecting our local wildlife